part three of the off-grid shed upgrades, digging a trench, doing some wire connections. Let's go ahead and get started. been suspended due to high water. I had to pump it out, get a sump in there. It's supposed to rain like cats and dogs tomorrow. We got our trench, which is now a moat, falling day. It's still pretty high. So we're gonna try pumping some water out with this little sump pump. Get my helper here. Yeah, go ahead, plug that in. All right, so Ryan, we're just gonna lower it down. See what we got here, see if it works here. Oh yeah, it's pumping water. See there? Yeah, it's all coming out over there. All right, guys, got the conduit in the trench now. This put me back about a week and a half due to the weather, but it's done. I'm gonna fill things in and we're ready to move on in the project. Guys, behind the shed, I want to show you what I've been working on for infrastructure since digging the trench. Went ahead and installed a 12 by 12 by 6 pull box. And I really love this because it's large and I can go ahead and, you know, fill it with cables and I can plan for the future. Went ahead and connected my existing solar that comes off the roof here. I have six panels up there. Went ahead and uh, used the Harbor Freight punch out uh, tool to go ahead and put a, essentially my own knockout here, connected uh, with a little of uh, some flex here. And that's working out really well. Also went ahead and installed a junction box down here. This is my wire run out to the pool area. So I worked with existing wire and conduit, installed a junction box. Also gonna use this junction box to run a 20 amp circuit from the inverter out to here. So I can use it for Christmas lights and powering devices and, and having power outside of the shed. Also did a cutout here 
installed um, some watertight uh, conduit and this is my uh, breaker for the solar on the shed and I upgraded this. This is now going to be uh, 300 volt capable and uh, what I really like about midnight breakers is that they're guaranteed to disconnect under load. That's really important. If there's an emergency out here, I need to come out and disconnect solar right away. I can just throw this breaker. I know it's gonna to, uh, cut under load. So that's really important. Still need to upgrade this. My lighting arrestor, this is 150 volt. I have a 300 volt inside. I'm just waiting to do all the wiring in here. Also, my solar lines here, I'm gonna go ahead and put MC4 connectors on these. I'm gonna wait till it's dark, there's no voltage, and I'll run up to the disconnect here, and then back down through the shed into another disconnect inside, and then to the inverter. So this is not a combiner anymore, it's just gonna be a disconnect. So that's what I've been working on here, just some infrastructure upgrades for the off-grid shed. And I'm looking forward to uh, doing my pull. I'm probably gonna do that tomorrow when I have some time. And I'm gonna run a lot of wire. So I'm gonna run uh, number eight to the shed because that's what the inverter requires. I'm also gonna run number eight out because at some point I wanna power the hot tub off the off-grid shed. Also gonna run a couple extra sets in number 12 so I can power the uh, deck. I'm going to do deck lighting. So I want power, off-grid power, underneath the deck. Also going to run a line so I can do landscape lighting in the front of the house. So I'm pretty psyched about that. It's a little bit more investment into copper and running extra wire, but in the end, it's good for uh, future proofing here and having lots of uh, options as we move forward and taking more of the property off-grid. I also want to show you some updates on the inside of the shed. So I went ahead and removed a lot of cable and wire. And right now I just have things temporarily hooked up to my old breaker panel. This will eventually um, be pulled through and done right. But I just need some power for the shed. So I did that temporarily. In the shed from my load center, I feed up to a junction box on top of this loft. And then I distribute power to all the circuits uh, and all the receptacles in the shed. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is put a breaker box over here and then run a new BX behind this uh, plywood and then go ahead and come out through my um, pull box. Let me show you what it looks like. So here's my pull box that's going to be mounted on the wall. This will connect over to my gutter. And then this is the receptacle I was talking about. I'm gonna go ahead and install this flex right here behind and run it down near where the pull box is. Give its own separate hole down there so I can feed the wire that feeds the shed. So that's what we're working on next. Here's the flip side of the plywood. You can see I ran my flex, my BX. And I just need to run the wire now, but uh, it's all roughed in, got everything strapped down. And I used uh, like half inch screws so it doesn't go through this CDX. Getting ready to feed my BX with some number 12 THHN. All right, got the insulation back up. Have my uh, threaded nail fitting all set to go. All right, got everything installed on the wall. Things went pretty smooth, as expected. Gonna do my uh, wiring, just some temporary wiring. Just wanna do my temporary line, old power line. Gonna just pull it out, put it into the old mold panel, and then do some wiring here. Hook this up, uh, and then just make sure I have power to the shed. This will give me time to run my new lines, my 240 lines from the house. I'll run those into my new system, get power up to the shed. You can see I ran like an extra 10 feet out. This is uh, the new line that's gonna go to the new load center here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, do a temporary wiring for tonight. Then as we continue to have some nice weather, finally, 
I'll pull that new wire. Run off the house 240 on the new system and then continue to work on the solar as well as the batteries. All right, so I worked late last night on the trench and the conduit and got things filled in. So I have to take out some dirt over here, but uh, got that in all buttoned up. It's supposed to be torrential rain today. I'm hoping that I can pull some wire before the rain starts. That would be most ideal because then I can start wiring. I have to say the conduit came out okay, but uh, you know, I had some challenges here. I couldn't get any closer to the building because I hit the ground rod. So I'm gonna have to 45 over to buy uh, 12 by 12 by six box. That I got close to the poles, I'm gonna go up and then under the staircase, I have another 12 by 12 by six uh, pole box. And I'll just run my wire up and through. I didn't want to get any closer to the cement pad where the hot tub is because of gravel and stuff. So I thought that'd be the best place to put it. So I'm pleased with that one, but the other one, you know, I wish I'd gotten closer to the building, but it just wasn't possible. Got my pull string and I just attached it to a little sandwich bag and I'm gonna shop back that through the line so I can work off this pull string to pull my wire through. Getting ready to put my pull line through the conduit. I got a little bag on the end there, sandwich bag, and it's zip tied off to the pull line. Got my vacuum over by the hot tub. I'm gonna vacuum from that side. Let's go ahead and vacuum this and we'll see how it pulls. All right guys, you can see I have different sets of wire. I got two sets of number eight and then two sets of number 12. Before I combine them and pull them, I just went ahead and organized the wire a little bit. So here's a set of number eight and that is tied off, or taped off in this case, in black. This one here is taped off in white, and you can see I used white zip ties on this line. And then this line over here, I went ahead and used black zip ties. So, same thing on the number 12 line sets, so I can separate it. So after I pull the wire, I'll know which wire is what. All right guys, getting ready for the pull here. I have my bundle here, four sets of wire, and with the tie off and the pull wire, it's all taped together and hopefully this is gonna work well. Yeah, go ahead, pull it. Yeah, slowly, slowly, yep. Yeah. It's good. Okay, I'm gonna get it started, all right? Yep, it's going the right way here. Okay, let's give it a minute here. Yeah, it's gonna be tight, all right? Okay, you just yeah, keep keep kind of pressure on it. I'm gonna give it some push, all right, and you keep pulling, all right? All right, I gotta pull more slack here. All right, pull a little bit. Yep, you're doing a good job. Good, keep going, I'm gonna push. Yeah, it fits perfectly. Okay, three, two, one, here we go. Now I got it. We got it, yep. Yeah. That's awesome. All right, here we go. All right, guys, I'm going to finish this video up for tonight. Went ahead and got the wire through the liquid conduit, and it's just temporarily because. I need to get a female threaded adapter and go ahead and glue everything. 
but for tonight I just wanted to put the wire through I'll pull this all out again tomorrow and redo it um, make sure I have everything glued and ready to go but I just want to secure things for tonight all right guys I'm gonna go ahead and finish up the video now this side is pretty much essentially done I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side with the panel do a knockout install my fittings and button everything up so I just want to mention this project definitely has lots of details I'm essentially redoing everything in my off-grid shed as far as wiring and batteries and inverters um, the whole power wall is completely changed there's a lot to it so it's taken time but I'm really pleased with the results so far I want to thank you for watching uh, please like subscribe hit that notification bell come on back for more videos definitely come back for my next video where I'll do some additional wiring on this run and uh, go ahead and start wiring up the EG4. Thanks for watching.